Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. And I'm here today continuing my discussion of who is Jesus based on the ninth chapter of the Gospel of John. Now, we've talked about this for several days, and I have today and tomorrow to, to finish this thing up. But it's about the story of a man who was born blind, and Jesus healed his eyes, and the religious leaders didn't want to believe it. They wanted to find something to trick this man into creating a lie or maybe tricking Jesus himself. So today I want to pick up a small section. Uh, it starts with verse 28, but I'm going to repeat verse 27 to set the context for what I'm going to talk about. The man explained, I told you once, didn't you listen? Why do you want to hear it again? That's the story of what happened. Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they, that's the religious leaders, cursed him, cursed the man, and said, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know God spoke to Moses, but we don't even know where this man comes from. And the man replied, well, that's really strange. He healed my eyes, and yet you do not know where he comes from. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but he's ready to hear those who worship him and do his will. Ever since the world began, no one, no one has been able to open the eyes of someone born blind. If this man were not from God, he couldn't have done it. You were born a total sinner, they answered. Are you trying to teach us? And they threw him out of the synagogue. <laughs> now, this is an interesting ending to this saga of the poor guy who just got his sight back. Hey, not a particularly theologically trained fellow. He wasn't asking a whole lot of questions. He was just enjoying the fact he could see again. And so the, the religious leaders questioned him several times. And after the, what was the last time, he said to him, what do you mean you don't know where he comes from? You're the religious folks. Of course you will know where he comes from. And they say, they said, we are disciples of Moses. We know Moses was a man of God. We don't know about this guy. Well, the Jews took it upon themselves very pridefully many times. This is an example of, of saying they followed the law of Moses. And they were Moses' disciple. Moses, as you remember, in Exodus is the one who led Israel out of the bondage of Egypt, who set up the laws we find recorded in Leviticus, and, and who who led the people to the edge of the promised land. He didn't get to go in, but he led them to the, the, the very next step. So Moses is very highly thought of. And it was around Moses and his law that the religious leaders built their whole system of what you can do, what you can't do, when you can do it, when you can't do it, what's right, what's wrong, what's true, what's not true, so on and so forth. And this guy, who's nothing more than some poor guy who was born blind and now sees, has terribly destroyed their understanding of what's going on. Well, I shouldn't say he's destroyed it. He's challenged it in a way they don't know how to react. So who is Jesus? Well, the man says, all I know is he opened my eyes from being blind. And if this man were not from God, he couldn't have done it. You know, let's face it. Jesus is a miracle worker. Sometimes it's a physical miracle. 
Sometimes it's a spiritual miracle. Sometimes it's a miracle of organizing the circumstances so that you don't make a really stupid decision or fall down a really big hole. Sometimes it's guiding you in a direction you didn't even know you needed to go. Jesus is a miracle worker. That's who he is. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's what he did when he was on this earth. That's what he has continued to do since he left this earth. That's what he will continue to do until he comes back and the kingdom of God is reached in its fullness. This poor man who knew nothing was smart enough to figure that out. Whereas the religious leaders can't. And so when he says that, he has to have been from God. What is the reaction of the religious leaders? Do they say, well, we disagree? Do they say, well, I suppose that's an option? They don't do any of that. They get mad. They get mad. When when they are pointed out as, boy, I want to use the word fraud, but I guess that's not the right word. They're pointed out as not understanding the real truth. They get mad. It says, and they threw him out of the synagogue. (laughs) I have no doubt that they threw him out forcefully, quickly and angrily. The man knew something they didn't know. He knew that Jesus came from God. And we find in other places we know that Jesus is God. And there are many people today, maybe some of you who are listening to me, that don't really know that either. You still don't. After 2,000 years of history, you're still not sure Or you've decided that that's not possible. I've got some of my kids who think that. It saddens me that the obvious is so non-obvious to them. But that's no different than what happened with this blind man and the religious leaders. It goes on to show us that, that what we think really doesn't change who Jesus is. If we think he's irrelevant today, it doesn't change anything. If we think he's weak and not able to confront the real issues of the day, it doesn't change him. Jesus is the one who comes to the earth to represent who God is in the flesh. And when he was here, very few people understood that. Now that he's gone, oh, sure, there are about two billion Christians in the world. That's fantastic. But how many of those billions of Christians really live a life that's trying to please him? What are you doing with your life? I mean, God gave it to you. You're using it to enrich the kingdom of God, or you're using it for some other purpose. I can't speak for you. And I can only say for me that I hope when my life is ending that God will see that I've tried to walk with him. And I invite you today to do the same thing. Try to walk with him today. Would you think about it? I'll be back tomorrow with some other thoughts, but if you have a need today or a prayer request, let us know. We'll do whatever we can, as fast as we can, to help meet your needs. And we really, really mean that. So thanks so much for listening. Have a terrific rest of the day. I'll talk to you again.